continuing with our series, now we're going to build the two or the 230S and 300S are the similar design. So we selected the 300S, which also comes again like the other subfactory components with a variable component package, a per stage or single stage package, and a standard assembly package for the product. The standard assembly pro uh, package in this situation will be a 6 inch and it will consist of having a lower chamber and an upper chamber and a discharge piece. The variable component package will consist of your nut package, your cable guard, your straps, along with your shaft, and it also comes with a bill of material so you can assure that you have all the components within the variable component package. And again, looking at the single stage package or the first stage package, in this situation we have a trimmed impeller package, so the impeller vane is going to be cut less than the outside diameter of the impeller, and it comes along with the standard chamber. The chamber includes the seal ring and the bearing. Then in the standard assembly package, which includes your discharge piece, your upper chamber, your check valve, and your check valve seat. Then there is a full diameter impeller, which comes all the way out past the outside area of the sleeves or the skirts of the impeller. Then we have your lower chamber, which has an upthrust washer on the inside of it, and it must always engage on top of the upthrust or spacing washer that we have inside the unit. There is the pedestal, another full impeller, your inlet piece, along with the seal ring, the screen, and then we have the motor bolt mounting package along with a cable guard, uh, cable lead protection guard inside the package. Again, as with the other SP product line, we're going to select the correct building bolt along with the appropriate spacer that's called out in the service manual. We're going to slide that up through the build plate, which again, in this situation, we no longer have it mounted for the 4 inch. We want to make sure that it's turned over for the 6 inch inlet piece so that it has the smaller uh, surface area for this fit of the inlet itself. Remember again that when you're doing this, that you want to have the plate raised up off the surface of the vise so that this has a full register area and does not interfere with the height of or the seating of the inlet piece. We'll secure the shaft. so that it doesn't spin during assembly. Then we put the inlet piece on, seat it all the way down. To position the first impeller, we use a specialty tool, which is formed and shaped to sit down in the register of the inlet, and then it's also formed for the impeller itself. So that goes directly onto the inlet itself, it's positioned, and then it's held in place with the handle while we do the assembly. Then we take the first impeller that consists of the pedestal, but because we don't want to distort the pedestal area during assembly, we'll remove this and use the nut off the other impeller during the assembly just to make sure that we tighten this up and we transfer the full torque to the unit. Again, you're pushing down on the split cone nut area and holding up on the impeller so it, firm, so it easily goes down. And just before seating, remember to go ahead and put a squirt of soap on the shaft, seat it, and then once it's seated, take screwdrivers and pull up to make sure that the cone is fully pulled all the way through the impeller. And we use our specialty tool, put, which goes directly over the nut, and then we'll tighten this down to the correct torque which is required. If during the process the impeller spins, only at that time should you use the counter spanner to hold the impeller in place and prevent it from actually spinning during the process. Once that you have this nut in place and it's torqued, you now want to re remove it to put the pedestal onto the impeller.
Now we have the other tool that is designed so as not to mar or damage the pedestal, which goes directly over, seats in place. You take your other specialty spanner, and it goes opposite of the area here, and you line that up opposite so that it doesn't rock while it's on the shaft. And then retort. point you can remove the specialty tool that was set for the setting the shaft height and you would insert a screwdriver in and just simply move that outward and then remove the tool off. At this point the inlet should now move freely up and down and not bind on the impeller itself. Now we'll go ahead and we'll add the up thrust washer directly onto the pedestal. At this point, we're going to be selecting the bottom chamber, which has again the upthrust washer inserted flat area for this to run against in the chamber. Make sure again that the seating surface for the inlet is smooth and clean. Same on the area of the chamber itself. Make sure it seats all the way down. At this point, because we're building a pump that has trimmed impellers in it, you want to make sure that you're selecting the correct impeller at this point, that you're not using the trimmed impeller in this place. It goes on the very top of the pump. The full diameter impeller would actually go next in the assembly. Slide it down. Get a good squirt of soap, seat it, and then make sure it's firmly seated all the way down. Use the screwdrivers to pull the impeller, or the seat the impeller and pull the split cone all the way up. And you may have to do this once or twice just to make sure it's all the way down and that you have it seated properly. Now we repeat using the spanner for the split cone nut and again torque it to the proper torque. At this point we're adding the next chamber. You can see the difference between this chamber and the bottom chamber. There is no flat washer on the inside of this. Again, at this point, the, the impeller that is here has firmly seated the chamber and it will not spin at this point. Again, we're making sure that the seating surface was clean. And now we're adding our last trimmed impeller at this point. Some pumps may actually have two trimmed impellers in the pump, so the last two impellers would be the trimmed versions. Now we're, we're ready to add our upper chamber, which does not have a, or is capped on the top, it has your check valve seat. Then firmly put that in place. You add your check valve, and then you add your discharge piece. When you add your discharge piece, you want to make sure that the slots that are in the discharge chamber line up with the holes for the strap bolts. At this point, the straps will go directly into the hole first and then down into the slot. It's up on top. So again, into the hole first and then into the slot that's up on top. At this point, we're ready to use the nuts that come supplied with the uh, straps in the variable component package. When you're tightening this up, especially with the taller pumps, you want to make sure that you do not have a twist to the straps that they are lined up as much as visibly possible. And if you're rebuilding a unit and the delta seal has been used, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to use a, a lubricant 
on the threads and it's either going to be garble lube or the fluber lube uh, that is uh, available and you would apply it to the threads and to the flat surface that the thread that the bolt or the nut would go up against. But again that's only required if you're rebuilding a pump and the delta seal might be um, have already had some uh, deterioration to it or some wear. When we go through the process of tightening the straps we want to make sure that we tighten on a diagonal um, process with the nuts to ensure that we do not end up again with the pump being both during the assembly. And we will, to ensure that we have the proper torque and not bending the pump, we'll do this in a three-step process with the torque that's applied to the straps. Again, as noted, tightening these straps, we're going to do a diagonal just like you would if you were tightening up or changing the wheel on your tire. And we're starting off with a three-step process. And so we'll start off with a lower torque, then a medium torque, and then a high torque when we finish the actual strap. Uh, tightening of the strap to the proper torque. At this point the pump is fully assembled and we can now at this point take the Allen bolt loose and take the pump out of the build plate. We lift it straight off. Place the pump on the table so we can check our end plate which is going to be the travel up and down of our pump shaft and the coupling is down in here so we're going to check the in play the travel up and down inside the unit and to do this we're going to use a depth veneer and this depth veneer has to reach from the outside surface all the way down into the inner surface that it's down inside the coupling itself and it's always best because you built it on the stand to take your down in play first because it will be at its maximum travel downward. Make sure that the tool does not rock in the process and you're inserting this all the way down until it touches the washer inside, tighten it up and then check your in play and we'll just push the shaft all the way up on longer units that might require a tool. Again we're sliding the tool all the way in until it makes contact make sure that the tool doesn't rock during the process once it's bottomed all the way out then tighten the tool up the set screw pull it out and check your in play in order to uh, make the assembly easier we're going to pre-fit the protector so we're sliding that down over all the leads and fitting it and then we're just going to slide it in place to get it semi in place and this will depend on how tall your pump is. Then we're ready to fit the actual pump itself into place. In fitting the pump just lift it straight up with heavier units you're going to have to you might have to use a lifting device and it's important that you go over the top of the lead and not cut it and then come backward on that and then fit the pump to the motor. Then the bolts that come with the bolt kit can be fitted or added. But on the MS6000 motors, Grunfoss motors, they actually come with these bolts. So the bolts that are in the bolt kit will be used for other motor manufacturers. And again, in fitting these bolts, it's important that when you go to tighten them up, that you follow the torque recommendations for fitting or for tightening the pump in down fitting the pump end down to the motor itself. And again, we would do that diagonally when we do the torque. Now at this point, we're going to add our lead, our cable guard, for the cable over the lead. So we'll lay the unit down at this point. We'll make sure that the lead itself is not twisted so that it will be positioned properly underneath the guard and we will fit the protector in the proper location. 
this point, you can take the guard, which will eventually fit underneath this tab. You may actually have to bend the wings in slightly by hand so as not to break the welds. So we're actually going to start in the reliefs or the tabs to be inserted down in this area. Make sure that your lead material is actually underneath and not being cut or pinched by the cable guard. And then at this point, you can tap the tab down, again ensuring that you're not cutting the lead or pinching the lead. And then you can slide the lead up to the proper location. On the shorter pumps, you may find it very difficult to install the cable guard in the recessed areas directly under the straps. So in that situation, it's best to actually remove one of the straps fully from the assembly. Make sure that when you're doing this that you have loosened all of the straps all the way around. Make sure that when you retighten it that the pump does not become bent. Again, finding the recessed area and then sliding downward underneath the, the strap and then inserting it down into place on the inlet, making sure that it slides down under this area of the inlet. And then once that's all the way down and in place, you can fully place the last tab underneath the strap. Make sure your cable is all the way underneath. And then you can reinstall the last strap. If you have removed the straps, make sure that you're tightening down, again, diagonally on the straps. You'll need to do that same three-step process on getting to the torque that you did earlier. At this point, make sure that you have your cable all the way underneath before you begin tightening up your straps to the last portion of the torque. Once you've got the straps snug, then you can fully seat the cable guard with the use of a rubber mallet. Make sure the tabs are all the way down. Again, ensuring that you haven't pinched your wire. And then again, we're going to torque this in a diagonal fashion from one side of the pump to the other until we're back to the proper torque. At this point, the unit's fully assembled and is ready to be placed. With the similarities between the 6-inch build of the 230S and the 300S pump, the only differences would be the type of inlet that we would have, whether it was going to be a 4-inch inlet to a 6-inch pump. And if we go to a higher horsepower, then we're going to go away from the standard 6-inch inlet, which has a relief cut into the inlet itself, and we'll go to a different reinforced inlet that has no cutout or relief in the inlet. And for the high horsepower, 6 inch, uh, 50 and 60 horsepower, 6 inch units, that would fit directly onto a pedestal. And then that pedestal would have screws for your cable guard to be screwed directly into in this, in this area there. If we were using an 8 inch build assembly, then the inlet would simply fit onto an 8 inch adapter plate that would adapt the 6 inch pump to the 8 inch assembly or 8 inch motor assembly. In doing this, it's also important to make sure that you're using the right size spacer because if you're building on a, for a 6 inch unit, you must be using the 71 millimeter spacer. And if you're going to be building for the 8 inch pump or 8 inch motor fit, then you're going to be using a 99.5 millimeter spacer. In addition to the change in the spacers that we're using, the process would be the same. So if you're fitting a 6 inch or building a 6 inch pump, you're going to be using the same plate that we had earlier put on the 6 inch side. And the assembly would be the 6 inch assembly and then mounting all the way down. And you'd be using again the 6 inch spacer 
onto the assembly, all the way down, and then building on that plate. If you were building the 8 inch version of the pump, you again would be using the 8 inch plate. Again, having it raised above the surface of the vise. And then this assembly would have the inlet on top of this plate. So again, the inlet and the plate, the proper spacer for the 8 inch assembly, the 99.5. The adapter, the 8 inch to 6 inch pump adapter on the proper plate, and then you would assemble the pump with the same process that we did or that we reviewed earlier.